நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேனல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் ரெனவுண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு அதித்ய குருஜி The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is Astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. May God bless all. The premium video subscribers have started asking a lot of questions and you guys are asking such long questions. I found the very first comment of the video Mr. E.S. Thyagarajan to be interesting. The title of the video is Subhatwa of Navamsha which is a premium video and this is the very first comment and it is such a good question it is as follows Guruji my humble pranams to you every day i enjoy the bliss of your sessions which explains the subtleties of astrological concepts i have attended all your in person teaching sessions i had many challenges in predicting a chart almost for 5 years and your concepts of subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength the explanation of chandra adi yoga have cleared all my doubts and i have seen many natal charts as proof of your astrological concepts your videos or an eye opener to me i really admire the astrological concepts explained by you guruji i would like to add something here i have certain challenges while predicting dasha and antadasha of a planet i find immense pleasure when my predictions utilizing your concepts of subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength applies greatly in the natal chart i really feel happy about my predictions but when it comes to the prediction of dasha and antar dasha i really face a lot of challenges please help me in this regard it is immense pleasure when i find the concepts of your Subhatva Pabhatva applies 100% in the natal chart predictions whereas I don't enjoy while making predictions about dasha and antar dasha I have to gain more knowledge in dasha antar dasha predictions so please accept my humble request to explain the prediction of dasha and antar dasha with an example natal chart i also place a humble request to publish this as a series of videos this was the comment of mr es tyagaraj well i understand what you come to say for 5 years you were totally perplexed in the prediction of a natal chart but my concepts of subhatva pabhatva Chandra Adi Yoga Sukshma Strength has helped you to disentangle many confusions. Of course I feel very glad that my followers understand the concepts. It needs a little experience to blend karaka and the house effects of the planet of which it is responsible to deliver and to make predictions. He had requested videos regarding the prediction of dasha and antar dasha. Definitely I'll do it. I'm even planning to publish videos regarding the subhatva and pabhatva of every planet. I have a good plan for it. Time is a constraint and I will definitely publish all these as general videos on YouTube. I understand that you have requested me to explain dasha and antar dasha predictions with an example natal chart. I have already written about how to make dasha and antar dasha predictions in my written articles. He also finally added that he is not an astrologer by profession 
Mr. Tyagarajan, I will explain certain concepts to you. Before teaching Dasha Antar Dasha predictions, let me explain few points briefly. The connection of Saturn and Mars will spoil certain things, whereas Jupiter and Venus will deliver benefits. I'll also explain the subtleties of Subhatva and Pabhatva, which is really another dimension of astrology. It is necessary to know Bhava Subhatva and Bhava Kasp Subhatva. Today, I had an appointment with a professional astrologer and it was an online appointment. He said he has been practicing astrology for a year and he started to practice during the lockdown and is living in a place nearby Chennai. He told me that he has earned a very, very good name as an astrologer. He also mentioned that he has been applying my concepts of Sibatwa and Pabatwa while making predictions of the natal chart and he finds that my concepts of astrology apply 100% valid. When he approached me, I predicted that his profession is related to Karaka of Mercury much before his introduction. You all know that I hardly spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes on an online appointment. I used to spend even half an hour on online predictions earlier, but now I really avoid unnecessary talk and my focus would be on only predictions. 30 minutes of prediction time was shrunk to 10 minutes of prediction in recent times. When I talked with him during the online appointment, I told him that he was definitely earning his bread by the Karaka of Mercury and he noted yes. He said that he has been practicing as an astrologer. Well, before explaining to you the predictions of Dasha and Antar Dasha, let me explain the cusp of the Bhava. A planet will function during Dasha and Antar Dasha based on its position from the cusp of the Bhava. I explained this concept to the astrologer who approached me on an online appointment who is indeed a professional astrologer. As soon as my consultation started, I predicted that he was earning his bread through the significance of Mercury. If one has to find the profession of a person exactly, then we have to check the cusp of the Baba. What is the significance of Mercury? Astronomy, writing, speech, commission, career, computers, mathematics, accountancy, astrology. I predicted that he definitely earns bread through the Karaka of Mercury. How did I make that prediction? My concept for predicting the profession is that the planet which is highly Subhatva makes a native to earn bread through its Karaka. Because the most Subhatva planet pushes the person to be inclined towards its Karaka. Therefore, when I predicted that the professional astrologer earned his bread through the Karaka of Mercury, he immediately said yes. He is also a premium video subscriber. When you research further related to Karaka of Mercury, you can definitely find out exactly what profession a person would be doing. For this purpose, you have to consider the Subhatva of the Bhava. I have categorized Mercury houses as Wisdom and Intelligence, which are Gemini and Virgo respectively. And based on the planet which is on the cusp of the Bhava of Mercury, you can find out which profession exactly the person is doing. It will be much closer prediction rather making a general prediction that it could be any profession related to Karaka of Mercury. I can identify even in a more detailed way whether the person works in the computer field 
or whether the person is a mathematician or accountant. It needs experience to analyze all these. The more we check different natal charts, we can get an idea and we would be able to find out exactly what profession a person does. In my experience, I have seen thousands of natal charts. It can be even in lakhs. I don't know. I don't keep count of the natal charts that I have researched. I was once crazy about doing research in astrology. I would have crossed maybe on lakh natal charts. Mr. Gopala Krishnan, a famous astrologer who was fondly called as GK from Thirupu, told me once he had researched 3 lakh natal charts. I once went to the inauguration of his academy and we were having a discussion about astrology. When I asked him how many natal charts he had come across, he told me that he had come across a minimum of 3 lakh natal charts. He said that he did such research before writing his book Marthuva Jodhidam. It is really mind-boggling. I would have not researched 3 lakhs of natal charts, but I have researched many natal charts and found my concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva apply 100%. This is purely the blessing of the Almighty. Well, for the prediction of Dasha and Antardasha, you have to make predictions based on Karaka, house effects and you have to also consider Bhavat Bhavam. I recall a comment of my follower who said that merely based on Bhavat Bhavam, I make most of my predictions. I find this a bit contradictory because Bhavat Bhavam is also a concept of astrology. When he says that I make predictions using Bhavat Bhavam, it is almost like commenting that Guruji makes predictions based on Vedic astrology concepts. It doesn't make sense at all. Nothing is beyond Vedic astrology. An astrologer must know which concepts are more significant to make predictions. Bhavad Bhavam is an important concept to be considered while making prediction of Dasha and Antar Dasha. This concept is that when Dasha Lord is in the 6th house or in the 8th house to a particular Bhava, then that Bhava will be affected. When this will happen? The Bhava will be affected during the Dasha of the Dasha Lord. Since you asked about how to predict Dasha and Antar Dasha, I explained certain subtleties of Dasha and Antar Dasha predictions. This is the most important subtleties of astrology regarding Dasha and Antar Dasha prediction. The Dasha Lord should not get the connection of Mars or Saturn. In case the Dasha Lord itself is Mars or Saturn, it must have connection of Jupiter or Venus. This is the most important point. Try to understand the concepts of the nature of Dasha Lord, whether it is natural benefic or functional benefic or natural malafic or functional malafic. Definitely I will elaborate about these concepts in my online classes. The very first step in making the Dasha and Antar Dasha prediction is identifying the Subhatva of the planet and identifying the Subhatva of the Baba. Once you learn all these, then you have to understand further concepts. The Dasha Lord is the strongest when it is running its Dasha. It is even stronger than the Ascendant Lord during its Dasha. Because the Dasha Lord is the planet that rules a natal chart during its Dasha period, it is assigned its responsibility and it delivers. Even the Ascendant Lord becomes less significant than the Dasha Lord which is running its Dasha. When the Dasha Lord is 6th house Lord or 8th house Lord, the Ascendant will be just inactive. 
Why will this happen? Based on the strength of the ascendant Lord, we can make predictions of whether the natal is capable of facing the challenges given by the Dasha Lord, which is 6th house Lord or 8th house Lord. Let us imagine that the person started undergoing the Dasha of 6th house or 8th house. If the ascendant Lord is strong, it means the native is able to bear the problems given by the Dasha Lord. If the ascendant Lord is not strong, it will deliver great mental pressure to the native. What is the subtlety of predicting Dasha Lord effects? You have to first of all understand the Dasha Lord very well. The Dasha Lord is definitely stronger than the Ascendant Lord when it is running its Dasha. The Ascendant Lord itself is less significant than the Dasha Lord during the Dasha period. This is the reason we say on an overview, though many planets seem to be strong in the natal chart, the native should undergo a series of Dasha which are favorable to the Lagna. Let us say that in a natal chart, the functional benefits are very strong and Subhatuva, but if the native is continuously undergoing the Dasha of functional malefics, life will be in great trouble. If a person is caught with the Dasha of functional malefic, the yoga in the natal chart will not function. The Dasha Lord is stronger than the Ascendant Lord and the Ascendant Lord should be strong enough to receive the good or bad effects given by the Dasha Lord. This is the point you have to definitely check in the natal chart. Well, now let me come to the combination of Dasha and Antar Dasha Lord. The Antar Dasha Lord should not be in 6-8 axis to the Dasha Lord. As per Bhavad Bhavam. As a consequence, the Antar Dasha Lord will not definitely deliver good effects. Sometimes the Dasha Lord will seem to be very, very strong. But the Antar Dasha Lords will be in 6 8 axis to the Dasha Lord. And the whole Dasha will not deliver benefits. For example, let us imagine that Jupiter resides in Sagittarius. Here Jupiter is in Mool Trikon house, in its own house in Sagittarius. It is such an auspicious position for Jupiter and we expect Jupiter to deliver great benefits. I will definitely give you the example natal chart but I want to share certain concepts before explaining the example natal chart. Because many people are requesting the subtleties or the techniques to predict the effects of Dasha and Antar Dasha. That is major planetary period and minor planetary period. Well, for the native of Leo Ascendant, Jupiter is Yogatipadi and resides in its own house, that too in 5th house. You definitely expect Jupiter to deliver benefits. On the contrary, if Jupiter is still not delivering benefits to the natal, what is happening in the natal chart? What could be the criteria? Let us even imagine that Jupiter is in Uttradam Nakshatra, that is Uttrashada. Take a look at this natal chart. In this natal chart, you can see all the planets, almost all except Ketu, which are in 6-8 axis to Jupiter. In other words, the three planets such as Mars, Rahu and Moon are in 6-8 axis to Jupiter. And the planets such as Saturn, Venus, Mercury and Sun are in 8-6 axis to Jupiter. Mars, Rahu, Moon are residing in Taurus and in Cancer, Saturn, Venus, Mercury and Sun are residing. In this case, Jupiter Dasha will not deliver benefits to the native. 
In general, you have to check how dasha and anta dasha lords are connected. You have to check whether anta dasha lord is in trine or in quadrant or in succeed axis to the dasha lord. In the same fashion, when dasha lord is in succeed axis to a particular bhava, it will not deliver the bhava effects. There are certain exceptions to this. First of all, know the rules and then you can learn about exceptions. I'll explain what will happen when Dasha Lord is in succeed axis of a particular Bhava. In this natal chart, Jupiter is in succeed axis to Taurus and Cancer. When Jupiter resides in 5th house, then 6th house to Jupiter is Taurus, which is 10th house for Ascendant. Therefore, during the major planetary period of Jupiter, it will not deliver the 10th house effects and the 12th house effects. Why I added the 12th house here? What is the 8th house to Sagittarius? Yes, it is Cancer, which is the 12th house to the Ascendant. There are certain exceptions, of course, for this criteria. It is predicted based on the dispositor of the 10th house and the 12th house. A Dasha Lord will not let the planets function when they reside and succeed access to the Dasha Lord. This is the rule. The Dasha Lord will activate the planets which are in quadrants or in trines to the Dasha Lord. When the Dasha Lord resides in succeed access to its own house, then it will not function that particular own house effects. Above all, when the Antar Dasha Lords are in succeed access to the Dasha Lord, then the Antar Dasha will not be good to the native. In case if 6th house Lord is in the 6th house to the Jupiter, then it is even worse. Whoever the Dasha Lord is, it doesn't matter. For example, let us take this example. The native is Leo Ascendant, Jupiter is residing in its own house, 5th house, Sagittarius. And the Lord of the 6th house, Saturn, is in the 12th house to the Ascendant. Please try to understand this. The native is Leo Ascendant, the 5th house Lord resides in its own house, Sagittarius. The 6th house Lord Saturn is in the 8th house to Jupiter in Cancer. This is not considered to be a good position. It is the worst crisis. The 6th eight axis between Dasha Lord and Antar Dasha Lord is not good at all. Even for the Subhatva of the Bhava, we check Bhavad Bhavam. This is one of the subtlest concepts in making predictions of Dasha and Antar Dasha. Please check whether the Dasha Lord is in 6-8 axis of a particular Bhava. That particular Bhava responsibility will not be done by the Dasha Lord. You don't need to even consider 12th position because it is less effective than 6-8 axis. There are certain exceptions for this. I'll explain these in my online classes. If the Anta Dasha Lords are in 6-8 axis to the Dasha Lord, and the whole Dasha period is merely useless. Therefore, this is a perfect example of a natal chart where you can see most of the Antar Dasha lots are in 6-8 axis to Jupiter, which is the Dasha lot. This is just an example natal chart. The second point, the most important point is that Dasha lots should not get the connection of Saturn or Mars or Rahu. Here comes the concept of Pabatva. If Dasha Lord has to perfectly function, even debilitation without Pabatva is okay. If a planet is debilitated but it has the connection of Jupiter or Venus, then it will reduce its Karaga but it will deliver the house effects. For example, if Saturn is debilitated and it is in connection with Jupiter, or Venus, it is not bad at all. The Saturn will definitely deliver benefits during its Dasha. Saturn will definitely deliver an occupation or business to the native. 
It will deliver a lot of money, but the business will be in such a way that the native cannot express it with great comfort. Even if the Dasha lord is debilitated, it is not bad. But it should definitely get Subhatwa. If you see that a Dasha lord is delivering a lot of benefits to the native, definitely you will find the Dasha lord to be Subhatwa. It means that definitely the Dasha lord is in some way connected to Jupiter or Venus. The Nakshatra is the second level of importance for the prediction. I have already explained how Dasha will function based on the Nakshatra Lord. How will the Dasha Lord function? The Dasha Lord will deliver its effects through the house where the Star Lord of the Dasha Lord is residing. It is very important rule for predicting the Dasha Lord effects. Please check the Star Lord of the Dasha Lord. The second step is to check where this star lord is residing in the natal chart. It is through this house the dasha lord would deliver its effects during its dasha. I will definitely explain this with diagrams on board during my online classes. It will be easy for you to understand. After a long wait, our online sessions have started. I wanted to give you the best of learning and it is one of the reasons I took a really long time to start the badges. I wanted to make sure whether the infrastructure, whether the gadgets, everything is okay for teaching. I felt that proper teaching setup must be first of all installed. I wanted to make sure that everything goes perfectly during my online classes. Well, coming back to the point, in order to make the prediction of the Dasha, first identify the houses owned by Dasha. And then you have to know which is the star lord of the Dasha and where the star lord resides in the natal chart. During the Dasha of the planet, the Dasha lord will deliver its Karaka and its house effects. The Dasha lord will deliver its house effects through the house where its star lord resides. There is also a rule mentioned in the original dictums. As per the rule, the effects of the houses owned by the Star Lord will be delivered through the house where the Star Lord resides by the Dasha Lord. However, make predictions based on the second rule giving the third or fourth level of importance. There are certain exceptions where you have to apply the Subhatwa and Pabhatwa of the Dasha Lord. You have to know on which criteria you have to apply Subhatwa and Pabhatwa concepts in order to make predictions. Let me repeat few points for you. The first point is that the Antadasha planet lord should not be in 6-8 axis to the Adasha lord. The bow which is in 6-8 axis to the Adasha lord will not function. The 6-8 axis is called Sashtashtagam. This is based on the concept of Bhavad Bhava. I will definitely explain Dasha Antadasha predictions based on Star Lord of the Dasha planet and Antadasha planet by writing on board during my online classes. In any situation, the Dasha Lord should not get the connection of Saturn or Mars or Rahu. If only Rahu is highly Subhatwa, it will be able to deliver benefits. Whatever rule applies to Rahu will be applied for Dasha Lord as well. I mean, if Dasha Lord is a natural malefic, it should have Subhatwa. If you find a Dasha Lord to be debilitated, it is okay. But it is necessary that it has to be with the connection of Jupiter or Venus in other words, a natural benefit. This means that the Dasha Lord is going to deliver benefits through its Karaka. Though it spoils the house effects, definitely it will deliver benefits through its Graha Karaka. If only Dasha Lord is Subhatwa, it will deliver benefits. The Dasha Lords, which are Pabhatwa, will not deliver benefits. 
the subhatva of the planet should also be checked in the navamsha and not only in rashi this is a very important point some people might wonder how a dasha lord is delivering benefits to them during its dasha while it is in conjunction with rahu in the rashi chart to answer your question definitely i will ask you to check the position of the planet in the navamsha definitely the planet would have got subhatva in the navamsha or even in the rashi chart itself the dasha lord will be in connection with rahu with a difference of more than 8 degrees you all know that you have to definitely consider the degrees of conjunction which is very very significant you have to check whether the planets are within 8 degrees or 13 degrees or 22 degrees prediction of dasha and anta dasha is a great art in addition to this please try to understand the concepts of subhatva and pabhatva mr s tyagarajan said that he can understand how to predict a rashi chart he has understood the basics but is not getting a grasp of how to predict the effects of dasha and anta dasha please check the star lord of the dasha lord it is very important because the dasha lord is going to deliver its effects through the house where the nakshatra lord resides check out first of all which planet is running its dasha the star lord of the dasha lord during the dasha of the planet the dasha lord will deliver its karaka and its house effects the dasha lord will deliver its house effects through the house where its star lord resides there is also a rule mentioned in the original dictums i just mentioned a while before as per the rule the effects of the houses owned by the star lord will be delivered through the house where the star lord resides by the dasha lord however make predictions based on the second rule giving third level of importance or fourth level of importance please listen to this video again and again so that you can memorize this point definitely i will explain some natal charts while i teach you the predictions of dasha and anta dasha in my online classes i'll teach you step by step let us take some general points now the dasha lord should never have the connection of mars or saturn or rahu if this happens the nadu was really fortunate the dasha lord should not be in conjunction with saturn or mars or rahu or it should not receive the aspect of saturn or mars a dasha will be spoiled if only the dasha lord has a close connection with rahu or saturn or mars there should not be the conjunction of saturn or mars or the aspect of saturn or mars or the conjunction of rahu or the dasha lord itself cannot be a dark planet let us imagine that the dasha lord is the moon which is amavasya moon and it is in conjunction with saturn what will happen during dasha of the moon the native is such an unfortunate person to undergo such a dasha in a recent video i mentioned this in the natal chart of my follower i saw that the moon is heading towards amavasya and it is in conjunction with saturn and the dasha of the moon definitely tossed the life of the native it will neither deliver benefit through its karaka nor through its house this dasha will definitely spoil both the mother and the mind of the native I explained this in a video that was published a day back. This moon dasha will affect the mother, the mind of the native, and of course, it will spoil the house effects as well. Because here the dasha lord moon lost its light energy. Try to understand the arohana and avarohana of the planet. What is arohana of the moon? If the moon is heading towards purnima, then it is arohana. 
moon gets the fullest light energy during the culmination of arohana arohana is nothing but the journey of planet towards light avarohana is a journey where the planet loses its light energy the avarohana of the moon is nothing but the moon is heading towards amavasya it is slowly losing its light energy gradually absence of light energy so how do you have to understand or make a prediction of the dasha lord you have to see whether the dasha lord is heading towards receiving more light energy or losing light energy if the dasha lord is in connection with jupiter or venus or lone mercury or waxing moon it will deliver benefits because here the dasha lord is heading towards great light energy it is going to be subhatva or the dasha lord itself can be a natural benefit it can have good light energy and let us say it has got another benefic connection it is more subhatva in this case dasha lord will deliver benefits based on its star lord it will say whether you're going to earn money in an honest way or dishonest way but earning is sure in order to predict this you have to definitely check the star lord in order to check whether the dasha lord will deliver money or not you have to check subhatva and pabhatva of the dasha lord in order to predict in which way the money will be delivered by the dasha lord you have to check the star lord of the dasha lord this is a very important point only based on the star lord the dasha lord is going to deliver its benefits or bad effects it can be either of them just now i explain the concept of star lord let me repeat the point during the dasha of the planet the dasha lord will deliver its karaka and its house effects the dasha lord will deliver its house effects through the house where its star lord resides there is also a rule mentioned in the original dictum and as per the rule the effects of the houses owned by the star lord will be delivered through the house where the star lord resides by the dasha lord and give importance to the second rule bit less maybe third level of importance or fourth level of importance the dasha lord will deliver its karaka and its house effects during its dasha and you have to definitely consider the subhatva and pabhatva dasha lord which is very important see i'm not changing my words at all and i'm repeating the rule with the same words you have to memorize the lengthy rule of the star lords so the fundamental point is to identify subhatva and pabhatva of the dasha lord find the nature of the dasha lord whether it is a benefic or not whether it is in 6th house or 8th house whether it has the connection of jupiter or venus or lone mercury or waxing moon then find the arohana avarohana of the dasha lord whether the planet is heading towards receiving more light energy or losing light energy or whether the dasha lord itself has some light energy or whether the dasha lord itself is a dark planet and then you have to identify whether it is going to deliver its house effect or not and as a next step in order to check in which ways it is going to deliver its effects whether it is honest or whether it is dishonest whether in a direct way or whether in an indirect way whether the native will be able to express to others or whether the native will not be able to express to others you can predict all these by the star lord of the dasha lord this is how you have to make predictions let me repeat the list of points you have to check before making prediction understand the concepts of 6 8 axis find the subhatva and pabhatva of the dasha lord see whether dasha lord is arohana or avarohana which is indeed the true subhatva find whether the dasha lord is gaining more light energy 
or is on a journey in losing light energy and check whether it gains the energy that it has lost by the connection with the help of a benefic as i said now let us imagine moon is heading towards amavasya and it is in connection with saturn the whole dasha is spoiled in addition to this if both this moon and saturn are aspected by jupiter then the dasha will be good how do you gauge this based on the strength of the aspect of jupiter dasha will function i repeat based on the strength of the aspect of jupiter dasha will deliver benefits the dasha will be good based on the light energy of jupiter in this case so i told a rule and i also added an exception when the waning moon is in conjunction with saturn which is a dark planet it loses completely its energy it has no light energy but we are checking whether this moon is retaining its light energy with the help of any other planet when a strong jupiter is aspecting this conjunction of saturn and waning moon the waning moon will regain the energy that it has lost and the dasha will deliver benefits according to the strength of the light energy of jupiter then what is the prediction of this moon dasha the mother status will not be spoiled the mind of the native will not be spoiled if the conjunction of saturn and the waning moon has no connection of jupiter or venus or any benefic then the dasha is completely spoiled there are many rules and of course more than rules there are many exceptions i will explain these in my upcoming videos i hope you understand all the points that i explained in this video i have reiterated certain points because you will understand better and i have also given a sample needle chart for explaining the dasha and anta dasha predictions i hope you will definitely understand if you have doubts you can write it in the comment section of this video i made sure that i expressed everything in a very simple manner with the basic three points that i gave you can make the predictions of dasha and anta dasha to a certain level my heartiest greetings to everybody and may you all live well thank you please write your answers in the comment section of this video write your feedback to astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you